Good afternoon. Today is May 12th, 2022. Uh, I've been getting some calls about uh, uh, panicking about the markets, concern, various levels of, of uh, anxiety because of what uh, they've been seeing in the news. And so I'm recording this video today to talk a little bit about that. One of my primary jobs as a financial advisor is to provide perspective for my clients. But even if you're not my client, this will be useful to you. So my thanks to JP Morgan Asset Management. They are the folks that do the research and they provide it to me. Okay, so in the news, it's been scary. The market's down this much for the year. And uh, I'd like to go back to uh, a time that I remember early in my investing career uh, as a private investor. And uh, it's called Black Monday. It was in October of 1987. The Dow Jones fell from 2,500 to 2,000. Now, in that day and age, a 500-point job was scary because it's one of the largest, well, it was the largest ever seen at the time, I think. And as a percentage, it's 20%. So uh, with today's um, uh, Dow levels, we'd have to see something north of 6,000-point drop in a single day. Really scary. Now, that drew everybody's attention. And matter of fact, if you take a look right here, uh, you see this red dot that says uh, minus 34%. At one point during 1987, the market was down by over one third of its value. Really scary times. Now, again, as I mentioned before, I provide perspectives to my clients. And here's the perspective. If you'd invested in the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies in America at the beginning of 1987 and sat on your hands and done absolutely nothing except let the market go up and down, right here, you would have been up 2%. Now this chart goes all the way back to 1980, covers 42 years plus uh, the year to date right now. Okay. Uh, the 42 years does not count this year because this year isn't over yet. But if you notice, these gray bars, there's a whole bunch of them that are above this 0%. And I won't make you go and count it, but basically 32 of the 42 years that are covered in this, uh, you were up. Now, sometimes, let's be fair, you were only up 2%. In one case, uh, you were flat, exactly, okay? But basically roughly 75% of the time, you were up. Now, uh, even though 1987 had a good outcome, 2008 is an example of where the outcome wasn't all that good. It was down 49% and recovered about 11%. You know, the only thing I ever guarantee my clients is eventually you're going to get a quarterly statement that you are not happy about. Um, so keep that in mind. But see all these red dots during the year, it gets scary. Well, the two sayings that uh, I have that uh, regard to uh, news and financial news in particular is an old newspaper saying, if it bleeds, it leads, which means they like the newspapers like bad news better than uh, good news. And a saying I think I originated, nobody tunes into the Weather Channel to see a sunny day. So that being said, I'm going to give some generic investing advice. Now, your situation is, every situation is different. Consult with your financial, tax, and legal uh, professionals as uh, appropriate, because I'm not giving out any tax or legal advice for sure. And this other stuff is just general principles. But what I advise my clients to do, if they've got to spend the money in the next two to three, sometimes four or five years, I tell them, take it down to your favorite bank, put it in a bank CD or a savings account that has FDIC insurance. And here's why. 
you'll see these three bars. Okay, the green bar is 100% in the stock market. The blue bar is 100% in the bond market. And the gray bar is 50-50. Now, you came into my office and said, here's $20,000 I'm investing in you. What do you expect in the next year? I'll say somewhere between minus 39% and plus 40% is my best guess. Okay, because going back to 1950, and that's what this chart shows, is worst stock market year, minus 39%, best stock market year, up 47%. Okay, if you put it in bonds, worst year, down 8% up 43%. And if you've done 50-50, your worst year was down 15%, your best year was up 33%. Hence the reason why I say for something that you know you're gonna need in the short term, put it in the bank, okay? Uh, I have no idea where the market's gonna be in the next year, two or three, but I got a pretty good idea if you put your money in the bank, where that's gonna be. Okay, let's go out a little bit further. Let's assume you can, afford to hang on to it for at least five years. Okay, the worst five-year period going back to 1950 was down 3% on average for the entire five years. Best five years, up 28%. Bond market, down 2%, up 23%. And if you did a 50-50, there wasn't a five-year period going back to 1950 where you lost money if you invested in the S&P 500 and uh, I forget which index they used for, uh, for um, the bond market. But in any case, 1% to 21%. Gets even better when you get out to 10 years. Down 1% was your worst 10 year period and up 19% was your best for the stock market. Uh, bond market, you never lost uh, 1% up 16%. Now that's, I won't say you never lost. You, there were undoubtedly years as indicated by this where you lost money, but your average over 10 years was positive. And the 50-50, up 2%, up to 16%. Now here's where it gets really interesting. And this is really critical because most of us, when we retire, are going to live 20 or so years. Now, there's exceptions to that. Uh, some people live 30. Some people don't live two. Uh, since, uh, but I, when I sit down with my clients, we are planning for a nice long retirement. As a consequence, 20-year um, rolling period. Going back to 1950, your worst performance is an average 6% a year. Your best was 17% a year. Bond market, worst 20 years was average 1% a year, uh, up 12%. And if you did the 50-50, it was up you know, 5%, up 14. So key lesson to be taken away from here is don't invest in the stock market for the short term. It's a mistake do invest in the stock market for the long term. Thus, you know, working with your financial advisor to see what's the most appropriate uh, mix for you because everybody's a little different. Okay. Now here's the important thing and this besides the stock market getting hammered right now, this is the other big story on everybody's minds inflation. Now, for those of you who, like me, were teenagers in the late 70s, we remember Jimmy Carter inflation. Okay. But after uh, the 80s came around, that started to go away in the early 80s. So uh, a lot of times people want to put their money in the safe places. So this is a chart that shows income earned on $100,000 in savings accounts. So going back to 1994, this gray bar shows you would have gotten somewhere in the neighborhood. I'm guessing it looks like about 3,800, 3,900, give or take. Okay. And you can see these other things there more. Uh, now, of course, interest rates started dropping. 
and then they came back up and now they're really low. Anybody who goes to the bank, uh, they know they're not gonna get uh, high interest rates, although I imagine interest rates will be coming up. All right, so why is that important? Because we just mentioned inflation. Well, these blue bars are what you need to beat inflation. So 94, 95, 96, 97, on through to 01. These gray bars, which is what you earned on $100,000 since beat the inflation. So you weren't uh, losing spending power by putting it in a savings account. Now, 02, 03, 04, you didn't keep up with inflation at all. In the short term, that's not horrible, but in the long term, it can get a little bit dicey, especially if you're talking about a 30 year retirement. And then for a little while from uh, 05, 06, 07, we uh, made enough in the uh, savings accounts to beat inflation. Not to say every savings account will do it, but this is just an average. Okay, then after that, beginning in 08, as you can see, the blue bars are above all the gray bars. Sometimes they're, they're above by a whole bunch. Okay, matter of fact, see this up here? You need $6,400 to beat inflation, and this is not anywhere near that. Key thing is, if you're investing for the long term, you need something that will keep up with inflation. So um, here's the, you know, people have been talking about, you know, I bonds. You can get them at the bank or through the treasury department, okay? There's some limits on them. You should know if you go and uh, buy an inflation bond today, you can't cash it out for at least 12 months. And for the first five years, you cannot um, get them out without a penalty. After five years, there's no penalty. They have two rates attached to them. One is a fixed rate, which never changes. And then one is the inflation rate. I don't know if that's the right term, but it's a variable rate that gets set twice a year, March, or excuse me, May and November of every year. Uh, as of May of this year, I believe the total rate is 9.62%, which sounds good, but there's also limits on how much you can buy. Um, so in any case, uh, I'm going to put up some of the disclosures just so folks can see the disclosures some of these will not apply because the guide to the markets is 70 or 80 pages. And uh, I didn't want to bore everybody while I uh, scrolled through them. But uh, so I just cut out the ones most salient to this conversation. And thank you very much.